this episode of DPV, we're going to give the Big Chief a proper introduction. But first, I'm going to tell you my Jeep story. Alright, so my Jeep story starts about... 20 years ago when I was first learning how to drive. Started learning how to drive in a 93 YJ. We took that thing out in the hills and bounced over Kelly humps and got into situations we probably shouldn't have, especially as a 13, 14 year old. But it was a ton of fun and I loved the outdoors adventures. You know, um, we did a lot of other things as far as off-roading. You know, we had four wheelers and Honda Odysseys back before they were minivans when they were actually cool. You know, like a big balloon tired go-kart. So anyway, um, yeah, lots of different off-roading, but my first car was actually a 69 Impala, which I still have. There'll be more on that in a future episode. My buddy, Alex, he had first an 89, I think it was an 89, Isuzu Trooper that I helped him get back together. And we played around with that in the, in the woods and uh, it was a ton of fun, you know? Um, the only big mods we had on that thing, the only good mods really, were the 15 inch subs in the back that would make the side glass bow out. But uh, as far as off-road off uh, mods, we didn't do anything with that except for, you know, drive it across creeks and play around in the hills and whatnot. And then he got a 91 Bronco and yeah, we did a lot of mudding in that. And, um, you know, having all those adventures with Alex, I was like, you know what, I need to get myself a full wheel drive. So, um, very first full wheel drive was a Nissan 720 pickup. Um, we call that thing Cooter. It was this gross piss yellow. Um, you know, we uh, had a three inch body lift when I got it in 31s. I think at some point I had 32 inch swampers on it, which it would barely have the power to turn. But it got me into off-roading and it was a lot of fun. We. Uh, did some mudding, did try to do a little bit of crawling type stuff. Didn't really know what we were doing, but um, I soon realized that having IFS sucks, having a rig that has zero aftermarket support sucks. Um, so I jumped into the Jeep world again and got a 95 Grand Cherokee. I went with the Grand Cherokee because I still wanted to be a little bit different back at this time, like about 10, 10 years ago, a little more. Um, People weren't building ZJs that much. Everybody was building XJs and Wranglers, so I, I chose, I wanted to be a little bit different, have a little more luxury. Um, so I got this thing, it was actually uh, my high school social studies teachers, and the only thing he ever did with it was carry around his golf clubs. Um, but that, that Jeep had a rude awakening for it. Or maybe, maybe not, maybe it was, I showed it what it was, what it was meant to do, so. Uh, right off the bat, two inch budget boost, some 31s, um, wheeled it that way for a long time, and then um, eventually built long arms for the front. Did some other fun mods, like I uh, did a kind of a belly pan skid. I sleeved the frame rails with quarter inch um, plate, um, stiffen up a little bit, built some bumpers. Uh, at this point, the long arms is a four and a half inch lift. And then eventually went up to 33s, swapped in an 8.8 8 .8 in the rear um, with disc brakes and did a triangulated four link in the rear with long arms. The thing flexed like crazy, it was a ton of fun. But um, with over 200,000 miles on the clock, ended up blowing the motor, ended up blowing the transmission and had a ton of electrical issues. Um, and it just, I was not getting anywhere with it. I was trying to get ready for North Idaho Mud and Crawl, and we're celebrating my 30th birthday there. And uh, I couldn't get this stupid thing running, so my wife was like, why don't you buy a new Jeep? At least that's what I heard her say. That might not have been the exact verbiage, but um, that's why I bought this thing. So when I bought it, it had a four inch lift, and 30 inch all terrains. Um, I immediately, before I even took it back from Lewiston, 
Um, literally hours after I bought it, I put on my 33 inch tires that were left over from the ZJ. And then three days later, North Idaho Mud and Crawl wheeled the heck out of this thing. It kept doing better and better as I learned how to drive it. Um, and uh, then wheeled it for about another year with the, with the 33s, just trying to do some various things to make it a little more dependable. Um, and then I just can't leave well enough alone and I decided to do an axle swap and suspension swap. And so that's where it sits today. Let's take a look. I got 38 1550s on it. Swapped in a Dana 44 from a uh, 77 Chevy. Did a spring over on it. These are Rancho 3 inch K5 Blazer Springs, which pushes the axle forward about an inch. Got part of my high steer done, just the passenger side knuckle with the sky off road. Um, high steer arm, reed racing, flat top knuckle. I need to get a stock pitman arm because this is a drop pitman arm from that four inch spring underlift. Um, so you can see the drag link's not level, but it's totally drivable. Blue torch fab diff cover. In the rear, we've got an Eaton HO 72 rear end out of a 69 Chevy. Got some disc brake brackets from Rough Stuff Specialties. Then it utilizes a Chevy Dana 44 caliper and disc. Just Rancho shocks. I made the shock brackets. Um, may have seen the video where I made these shackles. Did a shackle flip and 63 inch Chevy leaf springs. I built the shackles using Barnes Off Road um, bushings and then some steel I had laying around. The shackle flip, this is actually uh, the factory mount that I cut off. And then you can see I added plate, welded it to some plate, flipped it over, and then just bolted it to the frame with four bolts. With the 63 inch Chevy spring, mounted it in the factory location on the front, which then pushes the axle back about four inches, um, which gets it out of the doors, which is kind of nice. Get the board warner. 1339 with the low range. It's got a turbo 400 transmission, but that turbo 400, it's got an AMC bell housing. Under the hood, we've got the factory AMC 360, which just a uh, Holly 500 two barrel. Nothing too fancy, um, but it runs decent. Um, so we'll go with it for now. So with the whole AMC Turbo 400 and it's got a funky output shaft that only fits that board warner. So I'd have to rebuild the transmission to swap a different transfer case in, which I want to do. And then the parts for this AMC motor are super expensive. Like a new four barrel intake is about $375. I mean, that's halfway to just swapping in a small block Chevy with a GMC th Turbo 400. And then, you know, then I could swap in pretty much any transfer case I want, like a 203, 205 doubler um, without having to rebuild at all. So, I don't know. We'll see what I decide. For body mods, um, my, one of my very first episodes, I swapped in this uh, Gladiator grill that Alex got me. I've got this champion winch um, that I got from Costco about 11 years ago. I ran it on the ZJ. Man, it saved my life a bunch of times. Well, it saved my bacon anyway. I don't know about my life, but it's definitely got me out of bad situations. Put in a new fair lead. Built this little stubby bumper. Um, nothing too special. It's just a piece of rectangular tubing. Um, my dad built me these, um, or cut these out for me. Nice one inch, um, pretty stout shackle hangers. This side of the Jeep when I got it was fairly straight except for this passenger door. And then 
I did that at North Idaho Mud and Crawl. Smacked a tree, ripped the rear bumper off. The rear, I need to build a rear bumper. I've got all the steel for it, so that's probably next on the agenda because I need some rear um, recovery points um, before I go wheeling. In the back here, got my high lift jack mount. These mounts are pretty sweet. Built this little roll bar to help protect the kiddos in the back seat. Definitely a learning experience and a pain in the butt to weld with my stick welder. The X brace there is a 095 wall chrome Ollie tube. And that 095 is um, it's pretty thin to be welding with the, my big old stick welder. This side when I got it was hammered and so I found these doors at Jalopy Jungle and swapped them in and I tried to beat this out a little bit but I don't really know what I'm doing with body work and it's hard to get in there um, but I might work at it a little bit more try to get it a little nicer but then again I might hit a tree all right inside here we got some 94 Grand Cherokee seats they're supposed to be leather but I don't know if it's real leather or not maybe it's vinyl Anyway, they're they're super comfortable. Use the factory um, chief brackets, that I, and I was able to just drill a couple new holes and and uh, and bolt them to the ZJ seats. And now I can use they'll, they'll slide back and forth manually on the chief sliders. Other than that, nothing too special. I'm gonna use this um, little cover here. I'll unbolt that to put my full drive shifter to hook up to that linkage on the Borg Warner. Yeah, and then again, from the Grand Cherokee, fit pretty good. The back's a little bit narrow. See right there, there's a little bit of a space, but it works. It's comfortable, so, but there you have it. All right, as I was telling my Jeep story and describing how I built this thing, um, I realized a couple things. Number one, maybe I should have started with a Suburban. I mean, I've got a lot of Chevy parts that have swapped in this thing, and I'm talking about swapping in more. It might have been easier. Leads me to my second point is, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. I went from the Grand Cherokee to this thing, and because it, would, it was going to cost me quite a bit of money to get the Grand Cherokee back up and running. But looking back, it's been almost two years since I've wheeled this thing, and the amount of money I've spent probably would have fixed up the, the old ZJ pretty nice, even with as ratty as this thing is. So uh, a couple lessons, you know, like good things come to those who who wait, you know, and and it's it's good to be content with what what you've got. There are situations where it's perfectly acceptable to start over, and you know, with the Jeep, that's it's probably okay. I, I enjoyed the fresh start and the fresh build. Um, but there's other things in life that maybe it, it's not as appropriate, you know, like um, marriage, for instance. If if things aren't going great, maybe you just gotta evaluate your your attitude and the effort you're putting in. Check that kind of stuff out and get out what you put in so it could be your career you know I did a big career change going from carpentry to pharmacy and it cost me a lot a lot of time a lot of money to to make the transition and I don't know that it's any better it's certainly not worse um, and I think it'll be worth it in the long run but um, looking back in my early 20s if I would have maybe changed my attitude towards my job and put a little different effort into it maybe it could have been more enjoyable so um, just make sure that you count the cost before you make a big change to try to start over whether that be in the Jeep world or in other things in life uh, with that be sure to like share and subscribe um, hope you enjoyed this video maybe next time we'll be building some bumpers we'll see what happens